Hi guys, I'm finally back today to do my review on A Natural History of Dragons by Marie Brennan. Like I said in my previous videos, I didn't bring the book up to me, uh, up with me to uni, so um, I'm going to have to do the review without the book in hand, but the book is called A Natural History of Dragons by Marie Brennan and you should definitely go check it out and read the blurb and see if you're interested. But if you don't want to do that and you just want to listen to my review and my opinion on the book before you buy, try before you buy of course, then you're welcome to stay and come along on a journey with me. <clears throat> okay, so this book has quite a few pros and cons and I'm aiming today to try and go over that in about nine minutes and then go on to talk about what book I have also read and completed after I read Natural History of Dragons and what I'm reading now. So, the book, this book, was really well written. Um, I'm not going to fault it on that and that's probably the reason why I initially gave it four stars in Goodreads. I've now changed that I think to three stars because just comparing it to some other books I gave four stars to, I didn't enjoy the plot enough to give it four stars. So it's gone down to three stars, but if I could rate this book just merely on writing, then it would be a four star. It's good writing and I can't fault it on that. However, I don't feel like the book connected to its plot very well. So the title says it's a the book is called A Natural History of Dragons, so you pick it up in Warstones, you read the blurb, and you're like, oh my god, this is awesome, this is all about dragons, and in this world, it's all about how dragons came into being, and they find out loads of stuff about dragons. The book, in reality, is not quite that. They spend the majority of the book investigating something to do with the dragons, and then when you actually find out what it is that they were trying to discover and all the secrets come out, it's a little bit disappointing and it doesn't really have much to do with the dragons and their behaviour and their biology and the science behind dragons. And I feel that this is probably because the author herself didn't really think about the science behind the dragons very much, which is quite strange considering it's all about the science of dragons. But um. Yeah, this book is trying to combine science with history, which is very strange, I think. You know, history has the word story in it, i.e. all accounts of history are subjective and, you know, are going to be biased. But science is completely different to this, and, you know, it's an interesting concept to do a book about science and history but it didn't really work and it kind of made the book a bit um, uncertain of itself so you weren't really sure whether you were supposed to be reading a history of the dragons or a science of the dragons, is this going to be science based and it turns out it isn't, isn't really neither of one of those and it's really just a quite a strange story that I don't think really relates to the science of dragons at all. Um, yeah, so this is overall quite a disappointing book. Um, you expect so much of it and it's a slow, for me it was a slow paced book, I read it in like three weeks. Um, but it's in, but it was interesting and then it really fell flat of that just because I think she tries to incorporate too many genres into this book and like I said it means that the book isn't very sure of itself. It's not very sure of its own genre and it doesn't really work as a result. Uh, dragons and their history. This book is called Natural History. Natural History of Dragons. The anatomy and the kind of backstory that you do get is very, it's not fleshy, it is not fleshy. And the other thing is, she uses anatomy of animals that already exist now that we know to be real animals to describe the dragons. If you're going to do a book about dragons, a creature that we know doesn't exist in our own world, then at least create something new, create a new anatomy and think about your idea more instead of just stealing things from science that has already been proven. 
this book would have been really really fleshy if it had anatomy that we weren't used to and that's something new but unfortunately she just draws upon things that already are and already exist and it's just a bit like Marie Brennan can you please please not steal the anatomy of a bat to describe a dragon please Marie Brennan can you not do this and that's how I felt when I read, read, was reading it, in that exact voice. Okay, so next thing. The resolution to this book was so anticlimactic that, you know, I literally feel like I fell off the book. You know, I'd spent the whole book, you know, getting onto the page, climbing up the book and its story and it was getting good and then I fell off it and it was all anticlimactic and it was all just disappointing really. This book had so much potential and it was so interesting. I just fell flat of that and she really didn't take the right routes to write the story that I think she should have. Or if this was all intentional, I'm if I was her editor, I would have been harking on at her that you need to have a more direct route of your book. I'm not sure. I'm not even sure what genre this is in. Like, this is in the fantasy section of Waterstones, but there's nothing fantastical about it apart from dragons. There really is nothing fantastical about it. There was a glimmer, a glimmer of hope in the book where you learn about this mythical dragon that's supposedly haunting the village and you're like oh my god is this the fantasy that we've waited for but that falls flat on its face and I'm not going to spoil anything but it really does fall flat on its face good point about this book character development is it's tolerable it is some good character development I started off hating the narrator and hating the character of the narrator obviously this is not Marie Brennan narration this is narration of Lady Trent who is a character in the book and yeah I, I dig I dig the character development she starts off being a really whiny moany person that is really annoying and she finishes up as someone who's quite respectable and she's you know she's been through a lot and she gets stronger she is a still a bit of a I don't know how to really explain it other than she's a bit of a pussy at the end of it but you know she gets a lot stronger she goes through all these terrible things and yeah some good character development even though this book has some things that annoy me I would still recommend it and you know it's still worth a read some people are going to totally disagree and think that this book was really cool and was really different um, compared to other fantasy books but for me it was just a book that was unsure of itself and it, if it had been very sure of itself then you know I could get the genre and I could get why the plot had developed in the way that it had then I think you know my review would be very different right now but it was just a bit of a disappointment for me personally but for other people I can see why they would like it so that's the end of my review of the Natural History of Dragons by Marie Brennan some exciting news, I've finished a book since then and I finished Doctor Sleep by Stephen King and I will be doing a review of that very soon and it's going to be fun because it was a good book not sure if I liked it as much as The Shining but it was still good so I hope you've had a good day guys I'm also going to do a video soon about my university life because I feel like I have some interesting advice to share so yeah, that's all for me today. I hope you have a good rest of your day and I will see you all soon. Bye!